Moving on. Moving on. Part two. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is something a little different. It's not going to involve games. We're not going to have. We're not going to have the bonus question level. We're not having a, a patron called. question today. Um, we will continue to do that. Um, good. Good time mm-hmm. to plug patron real quick. Patreon.com. Do it. Slash. Love if you want There's a little bar that's going to go, more whoop, of this. Or um, whoop, which way it goes. But yeah, we, we, we had questions from James. We had questions from Drew. Um, Weezy's got a, is going to send us one. Weezy's going to send us one. We, but what we thought we would do today is we've had a an interesting... Um, few weeks. few weeks. In America. The last uh, podcast that we did was Election Day, yes. right? And we um, did not know the results. We did we not know the results because we recorded it in the morning. And Cody was here with us, and it was a good time. Yes. Uh, we've since had the results. Now, yes. we we want to stay uh, bipartisan, and we don't want to get into politics, because politics has no place in video games. Yes. Um, and you guys don't really probably care what our politics are anyway. Um, you know, the thing to know is that essentially um, we grew up differently, mm-hmm. and that's part of the reason why we work so well together i think me and I, me and tom honestly the last probably week we've had some real real conversations with each other mm-hmm. kind of were like this is why it works because yeah. we respect each other's views and opinions and we don't try to force them down each other's throats but at the same time we understand the other person mm-hmm. so i that's that's life advice with keegan just do yeah. that in general and that's and um, by the way that this is in no way saying that we are on different sides of no. the fence when it comes to politics we are usually quite aligned but at the same time we have come from different upbringings so we view things different things differently as far as fallout and that kind of of thing so what we wanted to talk about really was was that upbringing and kind of the the differences Mm -hmm. um between me and you right well let's start with the obvious one um i'm from america (laughs) you're from not america i'm from not america that's the rest of the world i'm from not america not america you're from uh, Hereford, England. I, I am. Did I say that well right? done. Yeah. Well, technically from Lempster, uh, <laughs> but Lempster. But you, you said you say Hereford. I right? always say Hereford because yeah. no one knows where fucking Lempster is. I don't know where is. Hereford is either. Um, we, should map, we should put a map somewhere of the UK. Yeah, so it's basically if you look, if you imagine a picture, picture in your mind, if you will, um, England, uh, the way that it looks um on a map mm-hmm. <laughs> and then if you can if you if, if you, you feel yeah what it looks like and then if you put a big dot right in the middle of that map smack bang in the middle then move it to the left slightly that's where you're from yeah the, what do they call that because you, you don't west have Midlands. states as i say they, they yeah. have territories west well technically it was fr- it was herefordshire um and that yes it is sure, sure not shire. shire by the way because that's fucking stupid you ruined my i'm not a hobbit <laughs> uh well that's debatable but sure. i am small and hairy but um yeah TMI. well hairy in the wrong places <laughs> but um yeah hereford was on the border to wales it was in the middle of the country um so the only reason i know where wales is is back in the day when i played i can't it wasn't even fifa it was another soccer game that i played on pro evo no, it wasn't Pro Evo. It was another oh. one. It was some weird knockoff game that nobody right. else played. I rented the crap out of it. Do you know the first, the first soccer game? I hate saying that word. Do you know the first soccer game I ever played? Italia 94. I was three. Yeah. What, was, what system? Dating myself. Uh, Genesis. Genesis. Or Mega, Mega Drive. Drive. Yeah. That's another difference. Yay. You differences. say Mega Drive, I say yeah. Genesis. Uh, it, was a, it was a pack-in, and it was Sonic, and columns and italia 94 which was a top down um so it wasn't a it wasn't isometric it was literally top down uh great little game actually i liked it a lot i would play it again um i don't know what was going on in italia 94 i guess it was the euro european cup or something something. um but yeah so i grew up there and i grew up in lempster which was a small Mm. town just outside of hereford but like i said i said how when you say small town how about f- when I um, was growing many? up, there about five thousand population. So that, yeah, so I grew up in a small town in Canada that's about the size. Mm. Well, I say I grew up there. I'll get my story here in a second, but yeah, no, you're totally fine. You know, you, you can interject. You're like <laughs> I'm good at that. Um, but God knows I can do that. <laughs> I so so obviously most of you uh, are familiar with Brexit at this point and kind of what that looks like. Um, I was there when the beginning of that happened not brexit but in terms of us joining the european union and when we joined the european union what happened was basically all of europe 
uh, opened its borders to the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. So they said... Which sounds um, like a good idea. It was. It was a great idea. It means you could sort of freely travel from any country that you wanted to in Europe. Your damn country didn't get to use the euro, though. Well, no, it wasn't that we didn't get to use it. That was the one thing that we requested that we didn't give up. You didn't. Which, in yours, from, I mean, obviously you know a little bit better than I would, but from an outsider's perspective, it makes sense because the pound is worth so much. Why would you kind of want to dilute it? I mean, there was that. There's a lot of... um, patriotism in uh in england we call it patriotism in the u.s either way um <laughs> there's a lot of that and nationalism the queen's head means something to a lot of people and i think it was the, you know the same kind of shitty people that are kind of um talking about brexit now and like nigel farage people like that those were the same people that were yelling oh we need to keep our currency we need to keep our currency but that i think was a fight that was worth fighting for because mm-hmm. as we all know the euro didn't do great and uh even our poor buddies ireland got suckered into that one but um but we kept the pound the pound stayed strong and i as a child you know the main reason why i didn't want different money was frankly because i didn't want to have to learn different money yeah i was it was all selfish first (laughs) off can we talk about a pound versus a quid versus whatever the hell you guys call it sure i've heard multiple different things and i don't know what they are Mm -hmm. from my knowledge what the hell a pound to me i think of like a dollar like I equate, I equate it to that the would dollar. be correct. However, it is in coin form. Yes, but it's mm-hmm. it's kind of like in Canada, you had the loonie and toonie. So it'd be similar to a loonie, which is a one dollar coin. Okay, it's a it's a it's a coin that's it's worth one dollars. It's like the Susan B. Anthony one dollar coin. Don't know any of those words, but yes, cool. I know who Susan B. Anthony is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yes, a pound is a small gold coin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's gold or not, but it's golden styled. <laughs> bronze maybe i don't fucking know it's painted. I'm, I'm not a metallurgist i'm just a guy that knows what a <laughs> pound plays, is unless he plays elder scrolls um so yeah a pound is small circular coin mm-hmm. uh, i feel like i'm dilu- <laughs> diluting this too much um the common mis- misnomer oh, that was the word i was looking for earlier misnomer uh is uh quid um, yes yeah, so what is that because i've heard i've heard a couple of my english friends mainly scott from shadazzle show used the word quid like it's three quid it's four what the right it's like like i didn't know at first i thought it was just slang it it is i think uh it's <laughs> like, the know. same as like bucks it's like it's three bucks okay you know it's like i i'm sure it comes from somewhere i, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's quid pro quo but, i don't know but if is, it's is one quid one pound yes okay so it's, uh, it's a slang the even more funnier uh misnomer is squid because it rhymes with quid and if you say you got three squid mate and it just sounds a lot funnier so yeah so you got pound quid squid uh all that but what yeah are, what are your coins like we have we have we dimes have, pennies nickels, dollars. it's it's almost embarrassing to say but i'm starting to forget it was one p two p <laughs> those pence yeah okay pennies yeah uh, so 1p, 2p, which 2p doesn't need to exist. Uh, 5p. Back in the day, it probably did. 10p. 20... No, there's no 20... Was... There was a 20p, no 25, which so, is what threw me off with so, quarters. So basi- Couldn't so basically understand you, that. You, it's like, Lots of coins. It's like the metric system where it does it in tens, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, no, it's yeah, 1, one and two. 2, 5, oh, 10, 20, won. 50, so half. then a pound. Cool. Yeah. So we have... No quarters. Officially in the US, we have a penny... A nickel, a dime, a quarter. We technically have a half dollar. Nobody. Uses I still don't them. know those names. You know, I just go five, ten. Yeah. Quarter. I, quarter is the only one quarter. I know. Because just went English on me. It's, I know. <laughs> it's it's so weird. It's because it, like because obviously I had to get a job when I came over here, and uh, when I did, and I was dealing with American money, I was so thrown off to mm-hmm. begin with. Um, but now I almost feel weirder about English money than American money, to be honest. It's it's a weird thing it's to It's like admit. when can, I get Canadian money that's colored. Like, I'm so used to the colored money. Like the $100 bill in Canada is purple. Mm. Like it has, it's not like Ours are different purple, colors, too. But it's... Our notes are different colors. Yes. Green for five, orange for ten, yeah, purple for twenty. Are. Yeah. And 50 I, just know, I just know the 100 is purple because I thought it was cool that it was purple. I and I came we, to the States and I was like... I think we probably have a hundred pound note. I'd never seen one weird i heard recently that um our five and so my dad came to visit by the way and he still um, lives over there he he does and he told me that some of the um five five pound notes are now made of plastic um which like a credit card kind of but like a thinner plastic all i can think of right now is uh like those gambling chips all i can think of is coke heads loving it (laughs) (laughs) just roll it right up love it so yeah, they've they've made life easier for for cokeheads in England. 
Um, but yeah, so I, so yeah, I grew up there. Um, Can we talk a little bit how? Because you, we've brought it up before, but you've done music in the past. How did mm. how did how did your upbringing? When did you get into rapping? That kind of because it's going to sound really stereotypical, and I don't mean to sound the way it's going to come out. Do what but you do. Usually, it. usually with white people, they're not very good at rapping unless you're <laughs> unless you're Marshall Mathers, right? Um, I was around before. No, I wasn't. Marshall Mathers was around in '97. Well, that's when he was. Sorry, I'm... that's when he was taken off. That's when. That's when yeah, when that's when he, he was still battling in '97. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was close actually. I started in '99. Um, as you remember, there was born. Yeah. So interesting that you ask. So uh, yeah, it was never my intention. So I grew up uh, listening to all kinds of different music, um, mostly rock music, to be honest. My first uh, tapes were Guns and Roses and Aerosmith. Those are the first two kind of cassette my tapes that I owned. My mom loves Steven Tyler. Right. Like, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't even know who they were. Like I saw the the album covers um was it guns and roses appetite to destruction it was okay. appetite for at, destruction. Least was, at least it was yes. a good guns and roses album yeah uh, and Aerosmith? it was aerosmith greatest hits okay part one because there's apparently more they're, yes. they're so fucking arrogant it's like well, they, it's greatest hits part a- one aerosmith, we got some I think the only band that has released a single that's charted in the top 10 from 1970 to 2000 yeah they pink was the last one i think or was it the thing i don't know pink Pink is my oh, favorite. Oh, I was thinking crayon. the singer Pink. No, the song. The Pink. song Pink. It was great. It's yeah, good, good video. Yeah, um, it was not their last song. No. Uh, the last one, the last big one was. Uh, I don't. I, I don't want to miss a thing. I can't sing. I don't want to close my. I don't want to sleep. I miss you, baby. But no, I. Uh, so I, I yeah, I used to listen to a lot of rock. I I started playing the guitar when I was younger, and I always wanted to be in a band, and that's all I wanted. So I was. Did your parents encourage music? Because I grew up in a family, yeah. my, my dad, we've said this before, my dad works in the music industry, so yeah. it wasn't required to play an instrument, but it wasn't, it was, it's for, it wasn't forcibly pushed on you, but it was, it was heavily recommended you play some my sort of instrument. My parents didn't really bring it up as a suggestion. Can I be honest with you and tell you what made me want to play the guitar? And it's going to be a little you can embarrassing. Be, you can be as honest as you want. It's going to be a little embarrassing. Say it directly to the camera. <sighs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. For those of you watching, watching instead of listening. Confession time. Uh, d- you may remember <laughs> back in the 90s, uh, there was a show called Saved by the Bell. Yes. There was Little also Zach another Morris. show that was very similar to Saved by the Bell called California Dreams. Never heard of it. No? Right. No. Someone out there has fucking heard of this show. <laughs> I also, uh, when Saved by the Bell came out, I was really a little kid, so... Right. Yeah, well, you're a baby, so I don't expect you to have seen yeah. this show. But California Dreams was basically, like, a, a complete rip-off of Saved by the Bell, right? Same kind of principle, different characters you, and everything. Was it, was it US made? I believe you know? so. Okay. I assume so, since it's called California Dreams, that it was made in the US, but I'm not sure. Does it mean it, you could pull stuff? <laughs> so, so, um... So anyway, there's a character in California Dreams called Jake. Yes, I remember his name. And he had a white t-shirt and a black leather jacket, slick back hair. And he looked a little bit like Kevin Klein, but he's not Kevin Klein. And uh, he played the guitar. And uh, I saw him and I was like, I want to be him. (laughs) And I'm this short fat white kid in england i want to be a rock star so i, I think at some point everybody wants to be i a think rock every, star. yeah i think you're right i think at some point that's where that's where a garage a garage band rock Something band like and that. uh terrio did really well so, until they realized it was all fake yeah i mean it's weird because i originally I'd st- i i was a basketball player i'm not joking mm-hmm. about that i i um when i was seven years old i started playing basketball i started watching because basketball for us was on at like 2 a.m 3 a.m because of the time times, difference so i would stay it's up like when and, i watched the olympics because i remember watching sydney olympics at like midnight when right. I was in canada but when i was a I child i could you know stay up late and i didn't have responsibilities so i would i would watch yeah, it was awesome <laughs> i would either vhs record it or mm-hmm. i would watch it and uh did you have, did you have a team well you said the hornets the, yeah the charlotte hornets team. was my team and I had a basketball ring put up in our in our uh, yard and everything. And it's called a hoop. I taught um, a lot of people uh, my age the rules of basketball because mm-hmm. they didn't know because it was not a thing it's, there. It's it's kind of like, I mean, obviously soccer is by far. Yeah, it, that's the national it's, sport, and yeah. it's and it's by far outside of the U.S. the biggest sport. And I think it's because other countries don't have baseball basketball football mm. like we do here and i'm sure kind of how you how 
soccer was for you was kind of like how basketball was for me. Like I was Probably. entrenched in it. Really I feel like well. you guys have a lot more sports than we do because yes. because the two sort of big ones back home of football, soccer, soccer. and rugby. Mm-hmm. And Which are, yeah, f- rugby is pretty similar to American football. It, it, yeah, I mean, there's differences. I it's understand. It's definitely but, a little rougher around the edges than, than American but football. That, I would say. I could see. I could see how you can have that instead of having bad. American football. Yeah, I mean, it's um yeah. So yeah. Um, but I, I really like basketball. So I, and which is weird for a very short, fat mm-hmm. white person. So I, um, I basically kind of convinced, uh, the people in our school that we should have a basketball team. And I talked to, you know, the, the PE teachers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And cause we didn't kind of didn't really do much around that. And uh, so I was captain of our basketball team at school for five oh, years. How good was that team? Five years solid. We were shit. Uh, <laughs> and we, we won exactly one but, game you in know, five years. I, it got to the point where at one point, we, I, and I remember this vividly, at one point we were losing the game so bad that we were, we would, it just looked like a comedy movie. Like we were just rolling the ball to each other on the floor, mm-hmm. just having a ball, mm-hmm. like having a great time. It was f- fucking ridiculous that we were still playing at this point. It was like, the score was like 70 to 30 or something. And we were just like, so you were the team I played in, in middle school that we destroyed. Probably. Um, when I played. But yeah, so I did that. And then I also uh, played for a county team for a little while. And we went to this, there's this Adidas uh adidas did this kind of uk basketball camp thing mm-hmm. i got picked for the all-star team on there so i i so was you not weren't bad no i wasn't bad Which at is, all I, knowing you now it's really weird yeah it's weird because because i didn't but 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 what happened was and this is i i feel like i'm this is just life story time now yeah but, but i have a bone for those of you that can see i have a bone <laughs> he has a bone in, his in arm. my uh yeah, i have several but i had this one particular bone in my left elbow that dried up um so the doctors say anyway it dried up and a piece of it chipped off Mm -hmm. and then that tiny little piece would get stuck in the tendons that connect my elbow so what would happen is if i would extend my left arm too Mm -hmm. fast it would lock and then it would stay like that for months until it kind of got calm down all the you, you couldn't know. just punch in just like go back no 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 it would stay there for months i had to get sling and everything and um so i had to stop playing basketball so i had to pick up a different hobby mm-hmm. and uh guitar was it so bringing it all back around full circle so guitar was it so i then uh wanted to be in a band and i was in a band and i played one show um it was fucking great um so i put this ragtag group of people together in this band and we played this this uh sort of it was like a not really a festival it was like my buddy put on this kind of i guess it was like a bonfire where mm-hmm. there was people camping and everything he had a farm you, you were the entertainment a lot of farms for something around. like that yeah there was yeah. a couple bands playing but we so were like one the, of them. the town my parents live in now they do a it, they live in a very touristy area and right. they always have like the stage set up down there that nobody really goes to listen to them but it's there in case you want to listen to them yeah exactly kind of and it was yeah so i mean we we had practiced for a while we had some original songs we had some covers and things like that and i had the first guitar that i'd ever ever bought was with me and i'd since gotten a better guitar mm-hmm. i used the good guitar for the majority of the performance and i thought mm-hmm. you know what if i if i'm to play one show mm-hmm. in my life you want to use the i want to smash a guitar yeah <laughs> so being myself uh somewhat of a drama queen at the time i i said if you go nuts enough for this song i will break my guitar and i changed out for the shitty guitar mm-hmm. and then they went nuts enough and i smashed my guitar to pieces on stage i threw it at the audience i jumped off the stage i went to my tent and i ate cookies there you go. That was it. That, that was, was it. that was the first and last time I ever played with a band. Um, because, weirdly enough, finding five people that think the same way about oh, music amen. is really difficult. So, <laughs> so we, it's weird hearing you tell because I've not heard these stories, obviously. Mm-hmm. There, and, no one has, like, apart have, from people that were there. We have uh, we have a very similar background when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. like, I grew up basketball. I had a, you know, Tim Duncan from the Spurs. Mm-hmm. I was a big Tim Duncan fan growing up. I had a life... It was Tim Duncan. There was a... David was, Robinson. That was the guy, yep. Yep, Twin Towers. Robinson, yeah. Uh, I so I had a life-size poster of Tim Duncan outside my room when I lived in Canada. So mm. this was pre-sixth grade. So it was... We moved in that house, God, probably was in third grade. And I remember I walked by it every day because it literally was seven seven foot one outside my outside there. And the... Unlike you, the team I played on was actually pretty good. The The... Canadians that I played with ended up winning five championships in a row. I left. That's because I wasn't on your team. Yeah. 
If I was on your team, you'd be terrible. You'd be terrible. Yeah. But the, it's it's weird because I left that because we went to the States because my dad had another job. Um, but I played basketball growing up. I was the only sixth grader on the varsity team back in the day. And partially that's because they were going younger. I don't want to toot my own horn and be like, I was fantastic because I was not. But they obviously were building for the future and they saw something in me. And my friends were so pissed because at that point in sixth grade, you had two decisions. You could either play for the school team or they had what was called mini basketball where they played in eight half foot nets versus ten. Oh, so it's it's kind of like, it's the jump it's the jump between between like kid basketball so to you adult could basketball. Feel like you were dunking and yes. everything. So so white people. So fun, so fun fact: <laughs> uh, I cannot hit a free throw without jumping in sixth grade. Like okay, uh, by the end of the year I, I was doing it, but when I started that was the joke. Like by the end of the year, Keegan, Mr. Clark, who's my coach, shout out to Mr. Clark. He's like, you're gonna hit a free throw without having to jump. I was like, our teacher was called Mr. Kingston, and we called him Kinky. Oh, <laughs> yeah, was, so yeah, it's uh, this will give you an idea of how how Mr. Clark coached us. If we gave up over fifty points for every point we give up over fifty, we had to run two suicides. Okay, do you know what suicide is? We have to go. I feel like I do. You but... go end line, foul line, back end line, mid court, back end line, other foul line, back end line, end line, back. That's right. one. That's one suicide. Okay, we had to run two of those for every point we give up over fifty. Uh, there was one game we gave up one hundred thirteen points. Let's just say we, we, I ran a lot yeah. that year that or that game. So when you were skinny, dude, I was super skinny. I was yeah. so I. I not grew, that you're not skinny now. No, I grew you're like way a, skinnier than I. Am. I grew like a foot between sixth and seventh grade. So it kind of sucks because I was four foot nothing in sixth grade. I was a point guard. Like I, I was me too. Teeny tiny dude. Obviously, yeah, teeny tiny dude. And it was just like. You know what we should do for one of our Friday shows? We should play basketball. Basketball? I was just thinking that when you were talking about The last time I played basketball, I was drunk, and I did really well. Last, <laughs> it was in California, Last enough. time I played yeah. basketball, I was playing with some friends that I used to work with, hmm. and uh, some dude pushed me in the back, and I punched him in the face because he shoved me. Like, Let's maybe was, not do that. Well, no. Well, <laughs> so it was one of those, it was, it was a pole there, and he literally just shoved me straight into the pole, and I was like, no, you're not doing this. And I, we were at a church. <laughs> just go, fuck you, and I punched him. Uh, bad idea. Keegan Keegan has anger issues especially occasionally. Play, well, yeah. especially when I play sports. Yeah. But so the sports side of thing, I feel like we had a similar upbringing mm. with that where we both kind of had that that basketball connection. And then with music, as I was saying, I grew up in a musical family. You're my, a drummer though, right? Kind of. So fun fun story here. My dad um, is in the industry. His, he's a drummer. His dad's a drummer. Kind of like that's just the way it was. My sister attempted to play drums. She didn't really. She was more the academic, not the musician. My brother, I think, is the fun one who finally stuck with drums. It took Do you still play? Months. Do I still play? No, does he still play? Oh, he Your still brother. plays. Yeah, he's fantastic. Awesome. I mean, he's really good. I, I've i told him a few times that I think he'd become a studio drummer or session drummer. Like, he is good enough. He's, my dad has a master's in percussion. And he's better than my dad. Mm. So, my brother is fan- and that's How do you get a master's in percussion? You go to school for it. Like you learn how to bang things really good. Yeah, he's real. Yeah, hey. Hello. <laughs> he. Uh, Sorry, Dave. How do you think you met my my mom? <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. Uh, Sandy, don't listen to this don't podcast. Listen to it. No, he. Uh, he's so. I'll finish my story, then I'll then I'll get into that. But I wanted to play trumpet growing up because it's loud. I'm loud. That's the, true. That's my uncle. I found out my uncle played trumpet, and the only reason I did not play trumpet is because I knew at some point I was going to have braces, and they said you can't play trumpet because you got to go. <laughs> And you can't do that very well with braces. Okay. So apologies to our audio listeners. Yeah. So you can't you can't make that noise very well. You make the duck lips, as I called it. Right. You had to do that. So I was like, you know, what? we'll play drums. My dad's like, You're, I can teach you if you want to learn. Um, so I, that was God. That was third grade. Was the first year I could join band, I believe, like at school. So we, I joined. No, fifth grade. Fifth grade. It was right before I left. So fifth grade band, I joined. I actually practiced on my grandpa's original snare drum. The head had not been changed in years. It still is the same drum head. I think now, like nice and dusty, you can see it all worn out. It's it's a it's a Remo head. My dad works for Evans, so kind of sucks. I'm surprised. There's a reason he hasn't changed that one. He changed it on his kit. But we, uh, I've learned on that. And then sixth grade, I went into the band again in middle school. But the band director left halfway through the year, so there's nobody to lead the band. So I kind of stopped playing then. <laughs> And I, I fell in and out. Um, obviously, my dad, at, after sixth grade, we moved a couple times. So we moved to Austin, lived there four months. We lived in an apartment, didn't have a kit. Uh, we moved to California, bought a house. And then moved to New York is kind of where I picked it back up. And I'm a big Green Day fan. Like, Trey Cool, to me, is one of my favorite drummers to mimic. Uh, Trey Cool, Travis Barker, and uh, Aaron Gillespie from Under Earth. Like, those are the three guys. When I play drums, that's who I, 
idolized and watched. And you know Aaron, right? I know Aaron, yeah. yes. I know Aaron personally, and it was really weird when I, when I met him. Um, but I had the opportunity when I went to, to uh, when we moved to New York, is one of the best drum clinicians is actually best friends with my dad. One of the best drum clinicians in the world. He charges upwards of over $100 an hour for a session. Mm. And I had the opportunity to play drums with him, and his studio blew me away because he videotapes you so you get form. So you, the first half an hour is you in front of a mirror just working on your form on a snare drum so you get the proper technique. Then he puts you at the kit with cameras and there's TV so you can see yourself from all these different directions. And again, focusing on form as a thing. And I had a great opportunity with that. The only thing is I played sports and sports trumped music. Looking back on it, I was not going to become an athlete. I mean, I was somewhat athletic. I was not the fastest kid, but I, I used to be able to run a mile in under, well, roughly five minutes. So I was pretty quick, um, which is why I was decent at soccer and outside midfield because I could run for hours. Can't do that anymore. Yeah. Tell me about it. So, yeah. So I had that opportunity of doing that and I kind of fell away from it. And it kind of sucks because I wish I'd kept that because looking back on it, I would have done more with music than I would anything it's else. It's one of those weird, there's, there's moments that you look back in your life and you see this kind of fork in the road where mm-hmm. you could have gone one way or the other and you, and you just kind of, and you wonder what it would have been like if you went the other way. But it also is one of those things where when I left home, I couldn't bring a kit with me. Like, mm. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not an easy thing to take. With no. Me. Guitar is a lot it, I think it's funny because, because <laughs> my mom, when I, when I decided on drums, my mom's like, I knew what I, well, what we were signing up for because your dad plays them and we had a kit. So give you an idea of my parents' house. When I was there in the basement was where our drum kit was tucked back in the corner. It's an unfinished basement. So tucked back there. They wanted so to live as them. shit then. Yes. They wanted yeah. to do a music room, but they never got to it. Right. And then, uh, in our living room was a marimba. So my dad percussionist played all these different things. So I, I can read music because of my dad. So, he, we would go through and look at Bach and uh, Mozart music, and I would learn it from him playing that and watching him play that. Like, I can't play the marimba. And if you don't know what the marimba sounds like, it's like a giant xylophone. It's a wooden xylophone. The marimba is also the the name of the default uh, the default ringtone on your iPhone. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what it comes It's, it's yeah. a marimba. I know. It's fun, so fun it's, fact of the day. Yeah. But yeah, it's. I loved. I loved growing up with with that music background but like i said i kind of wish i'd kept it but my brother is the one who who i think stuck it out and it's funny because i always wanted to be a singer i can't sing as you as you well know you and me both kiddo i can't sing because i love being the center of attention and to me being up on stage in the center was fine the reason i like drums because i was loud again Mm. i could be as loud as i wanted to didn't care i tried being a couple bands i played in my youth group band it's actually a lot of fun we would go which brings us to another thing because you said youth group which yes. i'm assuming is some kind of church Christian. Yeah. right okay church thing. which is another big this is yeah I, I wanted to get to sort of i feel point. like yeah we're, <laughs> we're we're diverging a little bit and i th- i feel like this is an important yeah part to bring up so you did grow up in the church correct no you didn't grow up in the church no i i joined the fill church me later. in then, i joined man. the church what were you doing around? in youth group <laughs> I, I just went showed group, up one day. Yeah, I went to youth group later on. So my my story when it comes, so I'm I'm a religious person, as you know. Now I am. Um, I wouldn't say less I'm, religious than you used to be. Would you say, or more? I was never. I mean, I'll tell my story, and th- this is why I think it will make sense. Go for it. So my parents were the type of parents that would take me to church, but because we moved so much, take me to church. <laughs> Sorry, I fucking love that song. Carry on. So my parents would take me to church and I never really wanted to go because you had to wake up early on Sunday. I hated it. Nobody likes to wake up early on Sunday. I agree. And it was just one of those things where like we would go, but we moved so much that we wouldn't find a church to stay with. Mm. And again, once we left. It is important, isn't it? To have kind of, because church is a, a, community. a big community sort yeah. of thing. So in, in order, yeah, I could see that being a problem. So two, th- two things happened. Uh, one, when we were in one of our churches in Canada, actually it's one that was right across the street from our house. Um, uh, story I've been told, I, I was very, very young when I was told this, but the, apparently the preacher was a quote unquote Satanist. Uh-oh. I don't know if that's true. I know he was in the wrong line of work. Yes, I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know. I just telling you what I've been told. What, what <laughs> if he, fo- he focused on going what? to hell and that kind of stuff versus the love aspect of things. So the hellstone brim and hell or the brimstone and hell, the fire. How does it make him a Satanist? Cause they, he, He's come out and, again, I don't know the full facts. Doesn't it just make him like an Old Testament style preacher? Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, this is just 
secondhand what I've been told. So I don't gotcha. I, I was not old enough to understand this. I just know we stopped going to that church and that was the reason I was given. Okay. So whether it's a joke, it could have been a <laughs> joke. I don't know. That would be funny if they were like, yeah. I'm not going to church anymore, Keegan. Why is that, mommy? Uh, the preacher turns out he really likes Satan a whole yeah. lot. So we're just going to move on. So when that happened, we had an issue finding another church and never went. And then we moved so many times. So again, we moved at, at that point, we moved to Texas, lived there four months, moved to California, looked for a couple churches. There was, at this point, I'm in middle school, high school. And my parents gave me the choice of, do you want to go or not? And interesting. At, at first, they at first at first they kind of forced me, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, we we think this is good, and it's just them looking out for me. Like, well, this is our values. This is kind of what we want to show you, and I understand that. And I know this is really dumb, but we used to have to drive. We live in Riverside County. Had to drive to Orange County, which is does it's not that far physically, but traffic is a pain in the ass. It takes an hour to get to church. Hmm. We then after. I'm not going to say the name of the church, but we stopped going to that church because it's just too long. Of Preacher a was a Satanist. No, it's just too long of a commute. And we're like, it's not worth it. Okay. Which sounds real bad. Then we went to another church closer to us. That was more. My speed is more contemporary. Um, the issue my parents had with it was we called it religiotainment. So here's a prime oh, example. Okay. So it's a lot of lights, a lot of flashiness, probably what you know as, as a mega church. Yeah. As the big church. They mm. weren't that, I mean, they're 5,000. Ted Haggard. Yes. Gotcha. So they weren't they weren't that big, but they had that feel to them. They had a Starbucks connected to them, so like they had a Starbucks at the church. <laughs> so the one point, the point where coffee my, with Christ. Yes, the point where my parents kind of was like, "This is not good." Was if you if you invited a friend to church and they registered, like saying they went there, you got put into a drawing for a Harley and a Olivia Newton John concert. Wow. Yeah. That's, so that's when it's again. It's one of those things like that's are, a cult. Are you here for the Are you here for the right reasons? Type right. thing. That's yeah. that was their. Th- thinking behind it so we stopped going to church in california then we moved to new york and i was not a not a church guy at this point i could care less about god i care about less about religion i just kind of live my life new york will do that to you yes yeah and my neighbor who she didn't live she lives behind us but there's a path like between our house so we could connect she was a year younger than i was she invited me to church to youth group a couple times just to hang out because we were friends like cool let me go have fun like i was invited to like bingo night like the the you had the nights to kind of draw, yeah, to draw people mm-hmm. in, and then you had the normal nights where everybody hang out. And I did that a few times. I didn't really go. I was like, whatever. And then eleventh uh, grade, I tried to commit suicide. Wow. Oh. So we're about to get real here. I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, I tried to commit suicide. I did too once, by the way. So you know, twinsies. Twinsies. Uh, so <laughs> that's a really horrible thing to do that for. <laughs> that's a weird reaction to have to that. But yeah, it's what sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So. The two things happened. One, I remember I, I tried to hang myself. Oh, wow. I was unsuccessful. I had a sweatshirt and the knot came out. Thank God. Um, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I'm just like, that is so something that would happen to you. Okay. Yeah, great, Continue. great thing to fail at. So I uh, I don't know if you did this, but when I, when I sent out a bunch of messages, to be, texting was a thing at this point because mm. I was a little bit older. This is high school. Yeah, high school. Um, and I sent messages out to a bunch of people and... Megan, I won't say her last name, but Megan responded. Mm. I remember waking up and seeing that. Um, to this day, I owe her, owe her a lot. I love her to death. We barely talk anymore, which sucks, but she is a very important person to me in my life. And whether she knows or not, I... Because she's uh, the one that made you not do it or not? No, she was there when, when I kind of came to and I was like, what? Well, I need help. Okay. Um, so two things happened. One, that happened. And I don't know why. My parents had bought me a Bible again because that's how they grew, grew up. And I had it sitting next to my bed. And I immediately just opened it up to Genesis and started reading. And it was one of those things where, like, maybe there's something here. Okay. Maybe maybe there is something bigger than me. Maybe so you were at on. rock I the, bottom. I probably... About, you're I hit, under rock I, bottom. I hit the lowest point in my life I'd ever hit. Rock bottom was up there. Yeah, I had... And you and looking saw back, a Bible and the, just started the, reading the it. Reason, the, reason, <laughs> the reason I tried to to do it is the dumbest thing because like I just broke it up with my girlfriend. I was stressed because of school and like stupid shit, but it, just, shit. it all piled on. I was like, this is the end of your emotional teenager end of the world. And looking back, do you think you, this is going to sound really weird, but do you think you really were genuinely trying or do you think it was more of a cry for help? I think it was more of a cry for help. Okay. I mean, I think if I wanted to, I could have done it. Mm. Um, 
Because again, I, cause, when, I mean, I used a sweatshirt. That happens a lot, I think, where people kind of like it's they. It's almost like more of a gesture than it's like this like, is I'm, how I'm fucking low it. I am yeah, right I'm gonna, now. I'm gonna do it, but it's not necessarily like because I mean anyone could just like pick up a gun and blow their brains yes. out if they really wanted to. Except but there's a certain theater mm-hmm. to a teenage, you know, s- not stage suicide, but a kind of a, a teenage. This is cry where I'm at. I need help. Yeah, and, and I think yeah, that's a good point to bring up I think. yeah so at that point again i was like okay maybe there's more to this i reached out to becca who was the neighbor who had invited me to the youth group before mm. started going for different reasons kind of like more intrigued this time and more interested in what it was actually looking to get into yes a bit of jesus yes getting into some jesus <laughs> and uh i'm not trying to make fun well I, so one of the things i can't I, help one it. of the it's things i want to say is reaction. I'm a religious person, but I don't shove religion down people's throats. This is true. I my my view on the whole thing is I will live the way I do. My mom and people that I know hate that I that I cuss. They hate certain things I do. I'm really sorry, by the way, David and Sandy, <laughs> because I feel I feel a level of responsibility for that. And I assure you, um, it was not my intention to to uh, make your son cuss uh, as much as he but does. It, but it, that's so. Again, I just. I, I live the the life, my life, the way I think it should be lived. And based on the way I live, people will come to me and kind of say, what are you doing? What's going on? How are, how are you getting through this? And that's just how, and I think that's so religion, I would say it's not, it, 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 makes, it is a part of your life, it but makes, it's not necessarily a part of your outward life. It's, it's more an it's, inward it's thing. It's my core values. Yes. It's, and what, it's, kind it's of, what I take. So like, I get made fun of all the time for listening to Christian music because it's so generic and I agree. It's it so is. generic, it's terrible. but it talks about themes of happiness, love, like these kind of things. So do other about. genres of music. Just I know, so you know. But, but, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of, a lot of times outside of it's sexualized. Can be. That's the, that's the problem I have is a lot of the music. I, I, I hate of it. sexualized music for what it's worth. Yeah. And I'm a complete atheist. like, yeah, atheist. So we'll do that yeah. after. But, um, yeah, I well, not, I don't hate sexualized music. I wouldn't say that's a, yeah. that's a strong term, but I hate the sexualization of pop music. I hate yes. how you have like. Well, Katy Perry used to be a gossip singer. Uh, yeah, you just have people singing about ridiculous stuff mm-hmm. like, um, you know, I want to fuck you, this, that, and the other. And sorry, David and Sandy, and um, you know, and it just it, it's bothersome more so to me because the people that are doing it are passing it off as innocence and the people that are listening to it are innocent Mm -hmm. and they don't even know that they're listening to this you know horrible kind of um, degrading mess of a song Um, more so it bothers me because it's totally deaf and and emotionally void but at the same time um, yeah the fact that people that's kind of that's you know. why I reached because I used to listen in high school before a lot of this happened. I, listen a lot, I still listen to a lot of angry music. You've heard my music. It yeah. screams. It yells at me and I love that kind of stuff and I still to this day Silverstein is one of my favorite bands. I love them. They actually just released a new single. And Silverstein are not yelly, right? Or am I thinking no, they of, do, they do I'm that. thinking of Silver Sun Pickups. I always yeah, get those no, two mixed up. No, yeah. They're way different. Um, I like one of those two so bands. So a little, sure. little fun fact along I'm going to go on a little tangent no, here go for, for a second but you uh, Skillet one of the bands I loved. I do know Skillet. Yeah, one of the bands I loved. I liked them. I liked them before I became a Christian. T- found out they were a Christian band, and they kind of because I had this attitude growing up that Christians were pompous. Christians are full of themselves. Christians are think they be- they're better than other people. And yes, there's a degree to that, and it kind of goes with the conversation. This how this all started, where we're talking about with the election kind of being this divisive thing. People have extremes one way or the other. I think it's it's fair to say that it's never worth painting any group of people with the same brush, Yes, which is something we've talked about heavily around this election cycle. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, as an outside point of view on American Christianity, there, there does seem to be different levels of it. Knowing that you have, I I knew you were a Christian long Mm -hmm. before we did this show. And, mostly because you played Christian music. But uh, it was, um, you know, it's something that I personally have never felt like you ever tried to be like, hey, come to the Lord or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of, um, I guess, grateful for that. But at the same time... Because in my opinion, it's not my place to do that. It's also, yeah, it's also a really bad way to get anyone to go to the Lord is to mm-hmm. beg them. That's, and that's how I um, feel. Because again, I didn't, a lot, of my, a lot of my friends grew up in the church and mm-hmm. they were... So one of the things, not to cut you off, one of the things we talked about growing up in the church is you have your faith and then you have living your faith and owning your faith. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things my pastor and Bart, who's my youth pastor when I graduated high school. That is goes, such a youth pastor name, yes. isn't it? Bart. Bart. He's yeah. from Arkansas. 
Bart from Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. hell. <laughs> he t- we, were in, we were in Puerto Rico and he, we were on a beach and he kind of looked at me and said, look, he goes, you got two paths. He goes, you're either going to burn and be fucking amazing and love Jesus, or you're going to be a train wreck and kind of get of things of the world. He goes, that's not a bad thing, but I prefer you be on this path versus this path because of these reasons. I won't get into them because they're personal. Hmm. Um, But it just owning your faith versus living your faith. So a lot of my friends, when you ask them why they're a Christian and I question a lot of people on this on this is because they were raised that way. So if I grew if I grew up indoctrinated, in, yeah, if I grew up in a non Christian country, would I still be a Christian? I don't think so. No, it's just the way it is. But that's a great question, and that's a lot uh, one that a lot of atheists ask mm-hmm. people. If you grew up in India, do you think you would follow Hinduism? And mm-hmm. the usual answer from a hardcore Christian is no, I would love Jesus. And, and I th- just like, and, no, and I think it's would. partially because, again, it's looking for that higher power. Mm-hmm. And the way I look at Christianity is, if I'm wrong about everything, I lived a great life. True. Sure. That's my that's my perspective. So if I'm wrong, if Jesus doesn't come back and he's just some crazy whack job out in out in the past, he's a magician. Cool. I lived a great life. I live by core values that I think are important. If I'm right, then I have salvation. That's my take on it. There's another version of that which mm-hmm. you may be familiar with the term Pascal's wager. Mm-hmm. You are familiar. Good. Which is kind of, um, and <laughs> I definitely don't want to get into a debate about Pascal's yeah. wager in here, but um, the kind of thought process um, being that, you know, what have you got to lose type type thing. Um, it's a very popular kind of outlook on that. Well, I may as well do it just in case, but I think the the major argument that some people have against that is the fact that you you do lose some things out of that because if you are living for the next life sometimes mm-hmm. you forget to live in the now this life. Yep. and you and, and you know, my problem is i live too much now right so you have <laughs> these like now people that are genuinely excited for armageddon or for at least the beginning well, at, of look armageddon at, look at all the cults that happen where these mass suicides happen because mm-hmm. they think they're going right and and that's the thing is that a lot of people think that these kind of because uh, i mean let's be honest 2016 has sucked balls like big time it's, it's been the it's, worst year ever and um, I think that I think that a lot of people are are, are starting to feel like the end times are upon us. They always feel that way. Though. They always do. You're right. Absolutely right. But um, I, I mean, think that there the there's a, a fascinating documentary called Waiting for Armageddon, mm-hmm. which is basically about these people that are they they prep- want this prepping. to happen. Yeah. yeah, they want the um, the Israelites and Palestinians to fight, and they want there to be con- you know contention, and mm-hmm. they think that these kind of things that's like their the, end goal is to- that's the end goal mm-hmm. exactly. It's like well, as soon as the world ends, Jesus can come back on a white horse, and we're all going to heaven, and that's mm-hmm. going to be great, and so. That's the stuff that kind of scares me about that, is mm-hmm. that you don't necessarily live the, li- the life the way that you would fully respect the lives of others and your own mm-hmm. because you are fully committed to the idea of an afterlife and that mm-hmm. there's something else going on after. Whereas from the alternate perspective, um, from the perspective of, of science and, and reason and, and atheism in general, um, we very much are scared all the time because... The biggest thing, and this is something that that me and my wife had a very long talk of, because my wife would never say she was an atheist. Mm -hmm. Uh, She does now, but she wouldn't. And the main reason was she was scared of death. And... And not the the, the unknown. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah, fear of the unknown, absolutely. But death is something that is obviously scary. Um, You know, no one one would deny that. Um, But it it was a case of... It was half a case of, I don't want to believe that when someone passes away, that that's it. I'm never going to mm-hmm. see him again, et cetera, et cetera. But also, I don't want to believe that when I go, that I'm that that's it. There's nothing mm-hmm. else afterwards. And it was kind of that that I feel like, and she could answer this question better than I could, but I feel like that was, she was always borderline. She took religious studies. Mm-hmm. She studied religions from around I, the world. I think, like she actually is very, very smart when it comes to that stuff. As, even as somebody who is who is a Christian and is religious to understand other religions. Mm-hmm, exactly. And not stereotype. I mean, right now in our country, specifically Muslims are getting, getting a, a raw deal. Yes. And it's, yeah. it was the Jews in world war two, like understand religions. And while you may not accept them, understand, understand kind of their thought process my opinion on all religion and i'm gonna get a lot of shit for saying this but i don't care is i think all religion came from the same same area we're all going for the same thing i i'm more of the type of person that believes there is a higher power Hmm. 
I believe in you Jesus. You think everyone just looks at it a slightly different way? I think I think humanity kind of broke it up. Because if, even if you look at Christianity as an example, how many different sects of Christ, Christianity do you have? And it opened my eyes when I went to Ole Miss because I was like, in New York, you're you're Jewish, you're atheist, or you're Christian. That's it. You go to you go down to the south. You're to going, be fair, Jewish people are atheists. Did you know that? Yeah, but kind that's of. they identify as Jewish people mm. though. Is what I'm saying. So those are those are the three types. You go down to to Ole Miss or somewhere further south, it's like okay, Methodist, Baptist, Church of Christ, like all these different sects, and you're like, well, you chose this because you thought it sounded good, and it all comes down to interpretation. That's mm. why like the Catholic Church gets a bad rep among Christians because. It's the Pope interpreting everything. And you posted something the other day where it's like the Pope on sign. I was like, that guy was crazy. I was like, yeah, Yeah, that guy was like, it's just, uh, yeah. If you follow my Facebook again, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I, I I agree. I, I, I do think that uh, the difference being that I don't think that any of them are real, but at the same time, I, I feel like there was a starting point for this, um, I'm going to say mythology, don't be offended. Uh, it's just in my brain, that's how I can cog- mm-hmm. cognizantly represent it. I'm super offended. There's, a, <laughs> there's um, this kind of starting point for this this mythology, much the same as anywhere else. And it, if you look into the idea of like a person that was born on the 25th of December mm-hmm. and was a son of a, a godlike entity and like all these kinds of things, themes that run through from paganism back to you know winter solstice all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff then you find the same things cropping up through egyptian gods Mm -hmm. through you know pagan gods through all this kind of stuff so i think you're right i think uh, like it's kind of funny we have some some me and my wife some, some of our best friends are um uh they're they're christian but they're like kind of more heavily into the church and things mm-hmm. like that they attend a lot a lot of uh, church and we often get into fun debates mm-hmm. about which it. i think it's um, it's fine as long as you're as long as you're respectful, respectful absolutely That's what it comes yeah. down to i mean you're yeah. you're allowed to have your own opinion on anything right that's one of the things and this is slight tangent but one of the things i believe wholeheartedly 100 percent is you're allowed to be you just don't allow your you to interfere with other people being there you exactly exactly um they're, but yeah, they're, we they're them. We <laughs> we, we would have these kind of debates about it, and and they explained it to me because I didn't know the difference between like Lutheran mm-hmm. and all that. And I kind don't of stuff. I don't care to really learn about it because I think it's all bullshit. <laughs> so that's my <laughs> respect, people. <laughs> um. I mean, I, I I respect him, and I would love to. I would I, I respect him, but it's bullshit. here. But I I don't agree with it. I that's, guess is a better way. It's a better way to say that. <laughs> It's <laughs> the blunt way of saying. Oh it. god, this podcast is going off on a tangent. So, um, so when I learned about that, I thought it's it's interesting. It's almost like they you kind of you have this one guy somewhere that goes, "I like all of this, but not that, but not that one yeah. thing." I'm gonna make a different version of that, and yeah. then it just kept happening until you have this kind of massively divided Christian community. Mm-hmm. And I think that it all eventually does just boil down to there being some so kind you, of a need if for. You ask somebody that. what a, if. So I'm going to ask you, what what do you categorize a Christian as? If somebody comes to you and they say, I'm a Christian, what is the one thing that makes them a Christian? That they um, believe and follow Jesus Christ. Bingo. Yeah. How many other fucking things get in the way of that? Everything. A gajillion things. Yeah. <laughs> so. but, but you can't you can't be gay, but yes. you can't eat shellfish. But you, get, you can't be gay at this church, but this one will accept you. And yeah. I don't want to go, again, this will be... Can't have tattoos here, can't have them there. I don't want to I don't want to go too personal with this, but there was a story I was told recently about mm. somebody who's a leader in a church, and they agreed to not marry homosexual people. That's fully their right, in my opinion, to do that, because it is a private section. Um, Doesn't make it right morally, but yes, it is their they, right to deny that They They have the right to do that. He doesn't, that person did not agree 100% with doing that, but he understood why the church as a whole wanted to. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So it was, it was one of those things where these people wanted to come in and say, 100%, this is wrong, all this kind of stuff. He's like, you know, our constitution, the church's constitution, when I say our constitution. They have constitutions? They do. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a whole the thing. dogma? Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's fun. Uh, their constitution basically says the Bible is the one and true word. So somewhere in the Bible, you can interpret as homosexuality is a sin. And the way he put it, and I agree with him a hundred percent with this, cause he's a very smart man. Again, I don't, you know who I'm talking about. I'm 99% sure. If you're not, I'll tell you. I, I wasn't 
I, I didn't, but now I'm thinking. I can. I'll, I'll, Did I'll we tell used you, to work with them? No. I'll then tell you. I have no I'll, idea. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. Um, was being gay is a, in his eyes a sin, but it's no different than the sin of than adultery or tax evasion or any of this kind of stuff. So why are we going against gay people, but we're not going against the tax evaders or people who? Doing that's adultery. that's so what that's it, a whole different. Topic, that's what it but, boils down to, though, isn't it? It's it's the kind of individual cherry picking that goes mm-hmm. on of what and I know I to believe and what not to believe. I mean, let's believe. let's be honest. Yeah. There's certain things where I'm just like I, I don't I don't necessarily go against things. I just ignore things, which mm. is not good. Which I mean, but you know, it's. I prefer that people acted like that, but chose the better parts of the Bible to follow. Um, but having I, read the Bible myself, yeah. I can say that there is a lot of stuff in there. I'm happy that people do not uh, follow. Um, but, you know, I mean, this is <laughs> you, you want a controversial opinion. Here's one. Um, Westboro Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. At least those fuckers are f- fair with their uh, their cherry picking. They don't cherry pick at all. It is mm-hmm. all literal. They believe every mm-hmm. single word of it. They definitely twist it in a dark and evil, horrible way, but you could never accuse those guys of uh, cherry picking because they will follow that thing to the goddamn T. Yep. Um, so, which, is, which is the argument of, is the Bible literal? Is it a series exactly. of stories? Exactly. So. And yeah, and I, and I think that's, that's, you know, we're definitely going off on a tangent here. Yeah. But the, and, t- as suffice to say, I grew up I mean, an atheist, you grew up a Christian. So yeah, that's, 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 that's I, that whole like <laughs> half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, and it was... Uh, but, it, but it does it does show the difference. Again, it's different backgrounds different people mm-hmm. you grew, you grew up in a country that was fundamental i want to i don't know if we have time but one of the things i wanted to ask you plenty was, of time like fuck you listen Let's to go. us <laughs> was what it was like coming to the u.s because obviously i live in canada Horrifying, to be honest i lived i lived in canada and like canada is slightly different but i call it america's top hat because it is very much culturally or america is canada's meth lab yes <laughs> <laughs> yes but like it's culturally very similar. There's mm. some things that are slightly different, but in general, you're so close in proximity, which I think it's funny because Mexico just completely culturally different. Yeah, thing. because of because of the uh older empires that were there versus Native Americans being here. There's nobody that I know of other than the Native Americans in the US kind of put down roots and mm. look what we did to them. We said, "Get out of here." <laughs> I think, it, I I think mean, it was a little bit like mass genocide, but yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> get out of here. See that get, bottle get out of here, genocide. Yeah. yeah. But I, I've always wondered like what it's like, because again, I came from another country, but it was not nearly as drastic of a change. What it's mm. like coming from, because you came when you were older as well. So mm, you, 25. You were able to kind of grow up and like, I'm an Englishman, which you are. And then coming to another country and having that sense of, I'm an adult. I know what I know. I. What were your feelings? Throughout my growing up, atheism was never supremely pronounced to me because the majority, I don't know the majority necessarily, but a good 50% of English people, I would say, are atheists and or agnostic. And Is it, it was just it, never a thing. It was they just kind don't of, talk about? No, just no one just cares. Yeah. It's just like, there, there were the churches in England, the cathedrals, the things like that are beautiful. They mm-hmm. really are. And you can appreciate them for the history. From, say, from an architectural standpoint, those things are Oh, yeah. Architecturally beautiful. Like the one in Hereford, for example, the Cathedral of Hereford has the Mappa Mundi, which is the first map in mm-hmm. the world ever. It's in my cathedral. And there's like sea dragons and stuff. It's great. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Like, don't like, go there. There's dragons. Like, like, uh, um, but, um, but it's, um, you know, I can appreciate that. And I think a lot of people in England appreciate it as an institution. But mm-hmm. I think that they also realize that the large majority of it, especially in England, and like this is way different to America when I say this, mm-hmm. is outdated. And it is it is very kind of um, fire and brimstone and, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, coming here, religion appeared to be more of a commercial commodity than, than anything. Mm-hmm. I remember... The first time I watched, I was watching TV and there was an advert for Jesus. And when I say that, I mean that. It was mm-hmm. just a guy that came on and said, hey, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I was just like, Did you, have you ever what seen, the fuck was that? Have you seen the was billboard my initial that reaction. says, uh, repent to Jesus? Yeah. There's one in Illinois. Every time I drive I've past, seen all those billboards. Going. Jesus. It's, it's the, right next to Larry Flint's uh, hustle, Hustler. <laughs> exactly. Which is, right you know, yeah, fair, it's, fair it's, play. It's, prime it's position. Like, good job. Uh, you got your abortion billboards out mm-hmm. here, which are horrifying to mm-hmm. me. You have, uh, you know, just all these kind of, um, it is just in your face. And and here's the thing about that. It's not just religion. 
advertising in general is in your face in this country. The fact that when you drive down the interstate or whatever and you have a billboard every 30 feet Mm -hmm. advertising something, Something. that does not happen in England. It is not allowed. You can't have that. Mm -hmm. When you're on a road, it's a lot more boring because there's no fucking (laughs) signposts everywhere. But at the same time, you do not feel like you're being constantly bombarded with, you know imagery of buy this mm-hmm. and you know have sex with this and whatever else so it's um yeah so so the when you look at religion over here and especially where we are which is you know we're in the bible belt we're in missouri here um you have we're the blue part of the bible belt yeah when well, it comes to st louis st louis is pretty st louis is, yes is the blue area but the anywhere rest, outside yes, of st louis no. it's very red yeah very very red um but i remember feeling personally kind of uh, not attacked by it, but just kind of like scared mm-hmm. because w- I would get a same friends that I talked about earlier that we kind of have fun debates with from time to time. We were around their house one time and um, they had like a, a dinner or something and they had everyone uh, hold hands and, and bow and pray. pray. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was weird. W- super weird. Yep. Yeah. Um, my wife used to work for a company called Premier Designs and Premier Designs is a Christian based jewelry company my wife not a Christian again mm-hmm. had a really tough time with a lot of their rules when it came to certain things but they we went to a conference for them and again on stage everyone holding hands mm-hmm. swaying and kind of praying and um, not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that but as an atheist and mm-hmm. as someone that is kind of a little turned off by that and behavior you don't, it you don't was super yeah. weird and i didn't want to offend anyone so i did the respectful thing that i always do which mm-hmm. is i bang my head i shut my mouth and i do whatever yeah. uh, you know i just listen um if someone asks me to say something like hey can you bless the table or whatever i would respectfully decline mm-hmm. and offer it to someone that had something to say mm-hmm. um but i would bow my head and i would listen mm-hmm. um, which again it comes back to respecting other people's exactly and i've never and like i've never Cause I don't, I don't want to say case, I've never been confrontational because I have. Yeah. I, I owned an atheist website. Did you know that? No, I didn't. There but, you go. <laughs> but like in that case, you're a guest in that person's house. If somebody came to your exactly. house, yeah. you'd expect them to follow your rules. And that's kind of how I feel when I go to right. these places. Like, I don't pray before I eat. My parents do that. And I, I, right. th- I still think it's weird to pray before I eat. I saw people praying before they ate fast food the other day. Told it me that. blew my fucking mind. Yeah, told me that. To me, that's like that's not unusual because of where I grew up. But it was... But, a, it was just so weird you know i can see praying over a family dinner table mm-hmm. where you have your family around you but to be two of you sat eating raisin canes in the, in the mall food court and to have a pray i'm just like but to that them, is but to them that's mean, important fuck it yeah cause, cause all for like, them. Thank, thank you for giving us this food. absolutely i mean i i have nothing against that but it was weird yeah. and it's and, and it's just kind of this thing that and there's a lot trust me there's a lot more about american culture that's weird than just the religious stuff but that was the one that hit me the hardest out of the gate which is kind of the reason why i made that website to begin with was because i felt not attacked but just kind of uncomfortable mm-hmm. and i wondered because i'd never felt uncomfortable before not believing in anything and i wondered what it felt like to be an american perhaps that was either not believing or on the fence about not believing or what it would be like to come out to your family as a non-believer because you hear stories about obviously the LBGT community Q as well sorry I forgot that one um, coming out to their family yeah, when did they, and hold then, on when did they add a Q because I, I, I semi recently okay <laughs> like I, was, I saw that on face, Facebook recently I was like what's it stands, I, I it stands I, for queer, queer or questioning yes, yes. I, I, I understood what it stood for but I was like when did they add like, yeah I had them LGBTQ like, just so I get that right um, but for for like for someone from from that kind of background, mm-hmm. obviously coming out to their friends, family, or whatever, it's a big deal. You can get disowned, you can mm-hmm. get beaten. You mm-hmm. can, there's things that can happen. It, to some extent, that same behavior can occur to someone coming out as an atheist to heavily Christian parents, not even Christian parents, mm-hmm. Muslim parents. You know, it doesn't matter Never what religion. Be. Any any highly religious set of parents. And so I had made a website um, that was basically designed to help those people it was designed to help people that were scared of coming out to their family um as non-believers which we've had conversations about this and i think i'm lucky so i grew up in a religious religious house with my mom from day one whether if i came out as gay she'd be fine she said i will love you no matter what she may not agree with what i've what i choose to do but she's like i will support you and i know not everybody has that and blood over everything so sandy i love you david 
Same thing. Like, you know what, Sandy and David, I love you too. They, uh, <laughs> my mom. I mean I, that though. I generally, genuinely do like you guys. <laughs> With my with my with my mom, I obviously grew up a little bit closer with her than my dad. Cause my dad was traveling a lot, mm. and my mom did a lot more of the teaching us things. Uh, my dad was more of the breadwinner. He was he was there. He was my baseball coach, and we had we don't we very rarely instilled to this day. Don't have very many heart to heart moments. When we do, it's it's either really weird or it's exactly what we need. Like we've had a few recently where it's like, look, I know we need to have feeling. these. Yeah. So it's it's just like it's it's wonderful. But my mom like. I can I can say what I want. Everybody loves their parents, but like I grew up in a fantastic house and I will to a hundred percent not choose anybody else's parents over mine because of how they raised me. And I'm proud to say that. And even when it comes to like a marriage, my parents, as every marriage has, has rocky times. And there's a few times where I thought my phone's ringing. <laughs> That's you. What I you knew it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Did I get it. Here we go. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> Back to the story. So, like, with my parents, there's been a few times where I think I've told this story before. I don't know if it, was, it probably wasn't recorded, but my mom one time got in an argument with my dad and left. And I've never seen her so mad. I, she basically, I can't remember what she said exactly, but it was more of, I'm never coming back. And me and my sister were scared. Like, as you would be. My brother was, my brother was a little too young to understand what was going on, but me and my sister at this point were, we were in middle school, high, well, probably high school at that point. And it was just, there was a good three hour period. We we're like, what is happening? And she came back. She came back with groceries, which I love my mom because it's very much what my mom would do. She's That's like, I was thing. out. I was angry. Let's go get some that groceries. That is a very mom thing to do. Uh, but it was, it was interesting because after that whole moment, like, I've talked to her about that. And I said, look, this was later on. Like, obviously, not in the moment I didn't. But I was like, look, me and Kelsey were my sister were a little concerned and like what was going to happen. And I think her and my dad finally had a heart to heart and said, look, we need to figure it out. Cause again, I don't want to give too much personal stuff away about them. Cause I don't know how much they're safe with, but my mom gave up her career because my dad's career path was taken off. Hers was as well. I mean, they were both at one point on track to make six figures each. And she gave up her career because my dad had a nice opportunity and, I don't think my dad ever really respected that to how much of a sacrifice that was. To I think that. respect is the right word. I think what like, a, yeah un- he, understood. He never understood how much yeah. that was until recently. I think as he's getting older, and I think it just might be because he's getting older and it's kind Reflecting of family's important. Things. Yeah, and we have these moments now where I told my parents the last probably seven years of their marriage is what I want my marriage to be. They still fight. They're still human. But in the end, they're there for each other, and they're yeah. they're there through thick and thin. They don't always agree on anything, but they, they will get each other's back no matter what. Hmm. And it's just it's great to see because not everybody has the ability to look up to something like that, especially as close as that is, is like my parents. Even if it's an outside relationship, I, I admire your parents greatly because they do spend a lot of time apart, and yet they still do seem to have a very kind of loving they relationship. Live, they lived about. So I think it's six months or a year apart on two different. My mom lived in California with me, my sister, my brother, and my dad lived in New York. Yeah, for six months. That's to tough, a year. man. It is, and it's tough on my mom. And I, I know it. Like you can tell when I call. Like my dad before he came home for grandma was supposed to be on a four week trip, and I called home, and you can you can tell, not that she's lonely, but I know once my brother leaves, because my brother's still there at home. He's seventeen, so he's moving out next year. I know once he leaves, it'll probably be tougher. Um, yeah. partially because the dog that now lives with her doesn't like her as much as dad. <laughs> Thank you, Cosmo. But it's, I've said this to their face and as I admire what they've done and I, I, I'm getting on a tangent of how much I love my parents, but it's true. It's, it's one you're of those allowed. things where, yeah, it's this one is, of, we're opening up on this one. Yeah. It's been almost an hour and We're half. still rocking it. If you're still listening, fucking bully yeah. for you. We're still going. But it's just like one of those things where, like I said, these last seven years, it kind of made me. I think my dad realized how important family was and not the pursuit of money is wrong because it got us a lot of things. We got to do some really, I got to go to Hawaii because of it. I got to do all these, I get a bunch of the, the music stuff I used to do, which we're, we can talk about at some point. On I'm sure podcast. we'll get into other things. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, I can do all these because of what he's done and I don't take the weight from that, but it, it does suck not having him there, but I don't like saying I didn't grow up with a dad because my family, my parents are still married. Like, they never, they never had 
any issues where they got separated or divorced or anything like that. And he was gone a lot because he traveled, but I also got to learn a lot because of that. So I, when I, I joke on Facebook, you see it when I share stuff with my dad, I'm like, where in the world is David today? And he would be in Australia, he would be in New Zealand. And as a kid, I learned about geography because I'd play where's, where's my dad. And there was one school project back in the day. And I think I've told you this, but we got postcards from all the, over the, all over the world as part of a school project. And my dad reached out to all these distributors at the time. And the goal was every week you'd calculate how many he got in and all this kind of stuff. The newspaper came in to, to report on us. And I had over, I think it was, I want to say it's like 3,500 postcards. Um, I'm now over 5,000. So now every time my dad goes on vacation, he does, or goes on a trip, he gives me a postcard. Second place was 500. The cool thing about all that, though, is not the fact that I won that competition. It's because I get to look at these postcards and people would write stuff about where they lived and culture and kind of how things were different. And I'm a fan of learning. It's, that's why I like talking to you about English culture, because you know it versus I know it from movies. Like, to me, English culture is Harry Potter. There's a lot like Mary Poppins. Hmm. It's Harry Potter. Oh, okay. Harry Potter. Harry Sorry. Potter. Too old. Yes. Yeah. Mary Poppins too old. So it, it's just one of those things where it just it's really cool to kind of see how their how their marriage is has developed to what it is today to something I can look up to. And I'm gonna stop talking that's good okay. about my parents but like i don't know i um, i'm kind of i don't know my my parents always had a really 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 close-knit lovely relationship they were not uh never had money um growing up but they worked for for everything every mm-hmm. single cent my mom used to say that at, by the time that all the bills were paid she'd have 50p left for herself and um my granddad and we talked about this earlier today my granddad did have a lot of money and uh, he built basically like a steel uh i don't know what the real word for it is but like a steel company i guess mm-hmm. um a construction company from scratch and he you know made a lot of money from that and um he passed that along to my mom and her sisters and brothers when he passed away so for the first time they had lots of money mm-hmm. just kind of out of nowhere like a windfall of money and what they wanted to do, and they've been waiting to do it for a long time, because Lempster, uh, let me say this, is a miserable fuck of a town. Um, there are really great people in that town, mm-hmm. really great people. I would never uh, say that I didn't meet some of the best people I will ever meet from that town. But the town itself will drag you down. and Because you're stuck in a bubble. Yeah, it was kind of, it was almost like this kind of weird sort of a little bit racist little bit kind of um nationalist just kind of was it time warp like an elitist feeling no it was more so it was not elitist it was if anything it was underdog it was kind of like we are the underdogs and uh everyone else in the world versus us the rodney dangerfield no respect yeah um but it was kind of there's this it's there's people and i have some friends that are stand-up comedians uh back home uh, I have some friends that stand up comedians here. Should I to keep? I'm a sit down um, comedian. Hey, but um, <laughs> so, <laughs> without the comedian part, apparently. But um, that was. I'm sorry. That was, that was <laughs> mean. Um, but they would joke and say that they they would tour up and down the country and they would go to all these different places and they never met a more backwards fucking place than Lemster. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would they would never been there. So um, so my mom and dad rightfully got the fuck out of there as soon as they could, as soon as they mm-hmm. got that money and they moved to, the, to a seaside town and um, within one year of them being, and they, they bought this beautiful uh, seaside cottage um, you can imagine, I'll, I'll just say English seaside cottage with a private beach within walking distance. And you can imagine how nice that is. Mm-hmm. And um, they uh, they were there for maybe a year or so. And, and they started going to holidays and stuff. They could Italy, things like that. And got to do all of the things that they've been waiting to do for all this time. And then uh, after coming back from Cyprus uh, for a vacation, my mum passed away. Um, she got off the plane, was walking to the terminal i guess and just um said that she had a bit of a headache and then couldn't stand and then they sat her down and then she couldn't talk and then she um just went to the hospital they just sent her straight to the hospital and i got a phone call i was here at the time and it was 2011 and i got a phone call basically just saying that um you know you my dad was obviously in fucking bits and i mean how do you call your 
call your only son mm-hmm. to tell them that their mum, who is in another country, is right now unable to form coherent sentences and has a bleed on her brain from an aneurysm that has, you know, popped. And um, yeah, it was fucking devastating. And I remember just falling to my knees and, uh, and, and crying. And obviously Jess was in the shower, I think, at the time. She came running out because she, she knew something horrible had happened and she kind of came to, to comfort me. And um, Yeah, and then four... Uh, four months later to the day her mum passed away um from were, cancer were you working where we are now no i was not you weren't yet i was working at world market it was a, it time. was a year before then mm. i believe because i remember you talking about the anniversary because i know yes. that's like i joined one up. of those things where i'm just like i'm gonna let tom do his thing <laughs> yeah i joined our it. current uh our current in place of employment in 2012 this was 2011 yeah. so um so yeah, so basically my mum died and then her mum died within four months of each other. My mum, healthy as an ox, suddenly gone. Mm-hmm. Her mum been battling cancer for the second time mm-hmm. for a long time, sort of slow fade. And the last um, eight days or so of her mum's life, we were staying in the hospital, living in the hospital, um, which is, you know, not a fun place to be, obviously. No. Um, and she's contending with that after because because from from my wife's sort of perspective she had been building herself up with this thought that her mum was going to pass away and being like well it's okay because i'll have tom's mum mm-hmm. and that can and be then, my mum now yeah and then right before that happened you know so so that was really kind of a massive blow for us and then um my my dad recently got remarried to a woman of the same name, which is a little which is weird. weird. A little weird. Uh, I want to know what the odds of that are. Uh, and I met her for the first time actually just a month or two ago. Um, she came over with him? She came over with him uh, early October this year. And uh, she's lovely. I'm happy to, uh, you know, sort of put mm. that out there. Very, very nice lady. Uh, I like her a lot. Um, and she's looking after him because my dad has epilepsy and. So he needs some a little bit of looking after. He is. Wish I could have um, met your dad when he was here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he they didn't have a lot of time yeah. to be honest, and he'll come over again. But it was. Um, or we we'll go. We'll go to a level two over in England some point. Yeah, we totally could do that. Level two travels. Yeah. Um, Screw local. We're going international. <laughs> <laughs> level two inter- international. But yeah, so I mean, it's uh, it's it's weird, isn't it? Because going to try and sum up a lot of what we are trying to get to the point mm-hmm. of here because obviously we've, we've been, going been going about an hour and a half. little bit long um but i think it's to been go good conversation. from basketball to to playing the guitar to then rapping which i haven't even talked about but don't worry there's a friday episode coming It'll on be that. Something, yeah um to go to, i to, found a cd let's just say <laughs> that to rapping to moving to america uh, by myself um, to losing my mom to losing my mother-in-law to gaining a stepmother to now has been just this weird journey one of my friends was sent to jail when I was younger which was the partial spark of a nervous breakdown which then led to my attempted suicide mm-hmm. um, uh, while we were sort of on that and um you know had pretty bad drug habit (laughs) for a while in england lots of money spent there um on not heavy we're not heavy drugs no not heroin or anything like that no just 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 lots just so people know he's lots of light drugs yeah but lots of light drugs and um he's not a cokehead no not at all never done a class a so that makes you feel better <laughs> <laughs> so there it you doesn't go. matter to them yeah but it is what it is but um you know obviously stronger now um and then you being kind of weird I, upbringing uh I, it, dad all over the place so, strong yeah, mother the, the, the weird the weirdest part to me is like i was thinking about this the other day st louis as long as i've lived somewhere consecutively yeah, or it will be next year um which is mind-blowing mm. to me because we move a lot again my dad being there my mom but you being... like st louis a lot correct i do i still miss my ocean i've said that from day one yeah, me too. Uh, i miss my ocean never had one but i miss it but uh <laughs> cross just, one just way more expensive to uh to live there 
but no, my dad, we followed his career and again, he's great, given us great opportunities. My mom being the rock and foundation pretty much of our family. Um, some seeing some of the sacrifices she had to give up uh, a few years ago, she went through cancer and I think that they have, I, I draw away from them when I'm, when I'm scared. Um, they say it a lot of the times they'll know, like my mom, it's instinct. Your parents know when something's going on mm. and I'm always distant from them, especially during that time when I probably should have been the closest to them, but that's how I coped with it of like, not that it wasn't happening, but I didn't want to believe it was happening. It was more denial. And I think after all that happened, I've had a different look on how I look at my parents, especially, especially my mom. I mean, my dad too, granted, he's still working as hard as he did day one. And, but he's taking more time to spend with him. When he came in, he wanted to spend time with me. He's coming in on Monday. I'm going to spend time with him on Monday. He's coming again. He's coming in again. I can't tell why. Or a couple about, times recently. Yeah. yeah. I can't talk about why because it's not hundred percent public why, but he's coming in on Monday and, uh, it just, I don't I hope know. he doesn't listen to this podcast on the way in. Eh? <laughs> he, I mean, they, he's coming in to see grandma. I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons he's coming in too, but there's, yeah. there's other reasons. Um, but it's just, it's just a weird kind of upbringing. I had that like you said the abnormal of, I've never really fit in anywhere and I I can honestly say you're probably the person I've spent the most time with ever Aww. outside of probably when I grew up from kindergarten to sixth grade with James, Will, Joel, like that basketball career. I'm like with. nodding like I know who the fuck yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> that, was, that was my basketball career. Oh yeah, James. Yeah. That was the basketball career. Will as well. Yeah. Not, the, not the James you know. Right. Will's, Will's real, real, Will was real tall. He's real tall now. He's like 6'4". Um, I was the short one of the group. But it's, it's just weird because we come from such different backgrounds, which is the whole premise of this, bringing mm-hmm. it back, is we come from such different backgrounds. It's what makes us unique, but it also is what makes us great, in my opinion, when it comes to not just our channel, but life and understanding, to, not to give a moral lesson here, but respect other people and get to know their background, understand where they came from and what makes them tick and why they are the way they are, because you will learn a lot about somebody if you learn where they came from. Yeah. Period. It's it's interesting you mentioned that. One of the things that um, we do, because I'm a trainer for the company that we work for, mm-hmm. and one of the things we always kind of say to the, the people that are listening is when that person, that customer comes up to you, you have no idea what their day was like mm-hmm. until they sat in front of you. They could have, you know, gone through the Starbucks and spilt 150 degree coffee on their lap. They could have, you know, found out horrible news about a family member. Could have just gotten engaged. They could, yeah, they could have just got. So you have no idea about someone's sort of background and upbringing uh, up until the moment that you first make contact with them. And I think that for for our channel especially i think when you look at the other people on youtube that are doing their thing you largely only get face value and i Mm -hmm. think that one thing that we've always been brutally honest about is kind of who we are as people and we'll talk about things that some people won't talk about and um you know we channel that across into the games that we play and and the reviews that we do and um we'll be doing it a lot more obviously with the podcast and then Mm -hmm. also you know the local area uh stuff that we're doing um so it's more a case of i think um us just wanting to put across to to you guys that you know despite all the divisiveness and kind of horrendous really uh behavior that's been going on over the last week or two due to the uh, election results or anything else uh, in your life but that's been a spark for a lot of people Mm -hmm. i think i feel like a lot of people were having shitty times and then then that was just like the icing on the fucking cake for a lot of people yeah about the extremes Uh, um yeah so this did this country has never been more more divided than it is right now except maybe the civil war i didn't live then so i don't know almost have yeah. felt like we're going that way to a second I've one about that too. but i i always get heartened when i talk to people about it and they all kind of eventually everyone kind of has finds a common ground mm-hmm. no matter what they're doing everyone finds one and despite our very very different upbringings mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff it's my unprofessional <laughs> i'm going off right now um just despite our very very different upbringings me and keegan find a way to come to a common ground to bring you Hopefully entertaining. Hopefully entertainment. (laughs) 
you know. But we also have this um, real talk. I mean, that's that's the coolest thing. I think one of the things I've gathered from just sitting here, and I've learned a lot about you. I'm sure you've learned a lot about me. Yeah. Is just we can have these real talks, and it's we're not afraid to say who we are. We're not afraid to stand up for what we believe in. We're here to respect everybody, well, as best we can. But it also we're real humans. We mm-hmm. are real people, and we just we started this because we wanted to have fun. That's all it started with. But I also think it's now turning into something where we want to have fun. We also want to have a voice. We want it. We, we have the potential to impact. And I've, I've said from day one, I've wanted to do something that changes the world, whether that's a tiny, small part of the world or it's something bigger than that. That would be fantastic to do something that leaves a lasting impact on something. And this conversation's made me, as it's been going along, realize kind of what other fucking gaming channel would do this? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, we don't do primarily, we don't do mostly games. Oh, we do mostly games, not 100% I mean, games anymore. But what's really kind of beautiful about it is, you know, we spent an, almost two hours. Doing yes. This. Uh, <laughs> we had no idea this was going to go this yeah, long, th- by the way. Literally, this episode is going to be, I'm going to, I've already got the title for this. It's going to be, uh, the shit, uh, shit got real. Yeah. That's literally the title. It's, it's but I think, be a giant I think we started this conversation talking about Barry, uh, mm-hmm. when Barry came over. And I'd like to think that. Barry and uh, Destiny. and Destiny and Batista Destiny. had a great time this morning, and even if that's the most we get out of this channel is helping them have a great 16th birthday for Barry, mm-hmm. I'll be happy. Oh yeah, but in if fact, just one person, <laughs> just one person, but if it does turn out that more people, you know, start appreciating uh, the content that we put out or asking us um, for input on various things and we start growing a little more then um, we're willing to be that voice and we're willing to go there <laughs> and just kind of um, like you said keep it keep it real and just uh, uh, call people on their bullshit <laughs> yeah yeah so, so I mean we are looking because I know that one of the things we've talked about doing as well is kind of like a cultural thing where we have people from different cultures come on and mm-hmm. uh, and and we try and get to know them better for you know by through conversation as opposed mm-hmm. to just kind of you know whatever's been presented to you through at media because yeah. let's be honest media every source of media is biased the media has been a piece of shit lately so, so what i love to hear from the horse's mouth yeah one of the things say. that we've wanted to do is um you know there are certain levels of education that needs to be education done. that we both need mm-hmm. um uh, by being two, you know, straight white males in in a largely straight white male dominated kind of world, I suppose, um, and we want to talk to people that are disfranchised mm. and feel like, you know, like they don't have a voice and give them a voice. Mm-hmm. So that's something else that we're looking into doing. So, so uh, that's think, the future. That's the future yeah, part think, of the show. I think we should just. Let's be honest. We're probably going to make this a two-part. It's going to be the beginning part of the, hey, this is what we did. Yeah, this is a two-part this got week. Because uh, that, got, that got, let's be honest, it got re- more deep than I think either of us imagined. Yep. So, And we're tired, too. So yeah. it's like it's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just, yeah, I just, I just looked just at the clock. There. and it's, It is 5.30 or 5.13. That was probably my wife calling. Then. Probably. She got some, some... I haven't let my dog... Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Okay, mm-hmm. so... Um, before Tom gets yelled at. Before I get yelled at, uh, thank you so, so much, much if you made it through yeah. this. Yes, if you made if, it to this point. If you made it one hour and 44 Might be a little bit less than that, minutes, d- depending on... Uh, ish, yeah, with yeah. editing. Um, mm-hmm. Then uh, thank you. And if you want to put any questions to us about our upbringings, if you want to share some of your upbringing, mm-hmm. if you want to talk about yourself in the comment section, please do it. Go, we would love go to. Go over on Twitter, yeah. Facebook. We've got all the social media links. I mean, yeah. honestly, we're we're everywhere. Instagram. We're social media type for days. Yeah. So if you want to chat to us, we are very accessible. Uh, we've said that since day one, and we will continue to be no matter how many people we have. For me, if you, if you want to reach me personally, Twitter is probably the best for me. Um, uh, I if mean, you want to reach me, uh, Carrier Pigeon. It's the best way. <laughs> carrier pigeon so. all right um so thank you again uh guys for watching, watching. and or listening if you're on uh the podcast and as always welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level bye bye